Good afternoon. My name is Chris Brown. I'm an analyst with Morgan's Financial, and I'm here this afternoon with Peter Ledwich, the managing director of Mako Gold. Mako has been uh, at a few NUSA conferences before. Um, Peter's been the manager for managing director for, in fact, the founding managing director, and took the company in a coat de voie. Peter, perhaps you can give us a bit of your background in West Africa. Yeah, I've uh, worked in West Africa, started about 30 years ago in uh, Mali and Burkina Faso. Uh, and uh, more recently, I've been there about 15 years, uh, working for a previous company called Orbis Gold. We had some great success in Burkina. And then once that got taken over, we founded Mako Gold and started in Burkina and uh, shifted our focus to Cote d'Ivoire, which is such an amazing country. So, so now you're in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, what's Cote d'Ivoire like to work in? It's a francophone country, I think, isn't it? It is. Most of West Africa is francophone. And so it's uh, it, the infrastructure there is amazing uh, and, and getting better all the time. There's a lot of money being poured into Cote d'Ivoire uh, compared to you know, its neighbors. Uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people don't understand how, how different each country is in, in West Africa or Africa in general. But the, the infrastructure is amazing. The, the government is, uh, you know, very easy to deal with, uh, very pro-mining. Uh, I couldn't think of a better jurisdiction to work in. And, and Peter, you've now got a, a gold resource at the Napier Project in Cote d'Ivoire. That's, that's, that project is your focus. Can you tell us a, a little bit about the resource and the immediate exploration upside? Yeah, so we've got 868,000 ounces at uh, 1.2 grams. At, so we call that the starting point. Uh, so at, at those grades, you know, those are very common grades in, in West Africa and a lot of uh, companies are mining uh, those kind of grades or, or even lower. So we know that what we need to do is basically double that resource. Uh, so, you know, once we do that, then it's economic or the other way that we can do it is what we're doing right now. We're drilling on, I guess it could be called a new discovery, you know, because we've been doing some mapping and trenching and so on for the last uh, six to eight months on Chaga North, a six, an area six kilometers long. And we're getting some really high grade, you know, uh, uh, rock chip samples there, you know, up, up to, you know, 76 grams per ton. So that's another way to grow the resource, find some high grade, and then you don't need as many ounces. And, and how much you've you've got a structure there that you that you're looking along. How long's the structure, and how much do you think you've tested to to resource status, and and do you have an expi a realistic expiration target? <laughs> well, I won't answer the expiration target because I, you know, people will think it's a it's a CEO rambling on again. But um, yeah, we have we've drilled. For our resource, we drill 4.4 kilometers of, of a 30 kilometer fault. So that's about 13% of it. So we like to say, you know, we, we can easily see two, three, four million ounces there, possibly more. Uh, but basically we need some more drilling to find it. And it's not your only project in Cote d'Ivoire. You've, you've got a manganese story further, further north. I mean. It, that's not a high value product. What's the infrastructure like around that that, uh, that discovery? Yes, that's kind of, uh, we, we call it an opportunistic discovery. So we were looking for gold and found a whole lot of pyrolusite on the ground, which is a manganese ore. So it started to, you know, pike our interest and especially our uh, GM exploration and chief geologist were harping on me. You know, there's quite a bit of it and I said, defined quite a bit and then when it was multi kilometers you know that got my attention uh, so yeah so we've been working that and, and so far we've got about 40 kilometers of uh, strike length of manganese bands that are anything from you know 100 meters to 300 meters wide um, excellent infrastructure we got a railroad 40 kilometers to the east we got a high voltage power line 10 kilometers to the west we got two dams on the north side and south side of the permit. I mean, you couldn't get better infrastructure. So what's the news flow for Mako Gold going to be over the next, say, six months or so? Well, one of the things that we've been working on is uh, uh, 
getting a joint venture partner for the manganese project so that can free us up to, to work strictly in the gold project while monetizing that partially. So we're waiting to hear if there's some interest on that. So that could be one of the catalysts. Uh, we're doing our drilling program now. The, the results won't be out for probably for another four or five weeks or so, but it is, we are targeting high grade. So that could be a bit of a game changer for us. And, you know, we're working on some other, you know, deals, I guess, that, uh, you know, uh, companies like us are always working on. And, and Peter, I haven't looked at the gold price this morning. Can you tell me what it is? Well, it jumped up a little bit. So uh, it was, a, last time I looked, it was 2470, something like that. So, uh, you know, hit an all time high. You're seeing it translate a little bit into some of the producers. Uh, typically, you know, you've been at this a few years longer than me, but I've been in this business, you know, close to 40 years. And uh, typically the, the producers start to get, you know, the, the advantages and then it trickles down to the juniors. So, you know, it's been a long wait and we're definitely waiting for that. Peter, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for telling us about Mako Gold and Cote d'Ivoire. And um, yeah, what did he say about the gold price? 2470 or something? It's not actually all that bad, really. Thanks, Peter. Cheers.